Hey, welcome to Data Geek TV. This is my first episode where I take a look at what's going on in the news regarding data science and how it's affecting our lives. So you can just kind of get a recap of what the hell is happening out there. Today being December 31st of 2016, I thought it would be the perfect time to take a look at the past year. And I'm just gonna pick apart five different articles that highlight some really interesting um, data stories that caught my eye. Some of them are more impactful to our lives and others, some are just fun. So let's go. All right, so first I wanna highlight Nathan Yao's website, Flowing Data. Nathan does an incredible job using R and D3 and data science and data viz all this cool shit. And here, what he has is an article about how you will die. Yes, you can predict how you will die. The way 2016 has gone, I'm not surprised. So you go down and you can check it out. There's this little fun interactive graph. You pick your gender, your race, and your age. I am almost 35, not yet. And as it goes, you can see at what age the percentage of people are dying from what thing and you can just let it run until 100 percent of people till everybody's dead you know as my favorite movie said uh on a long enough timeline the survival rate for all of us drops to zero let me know if you caught that so number five was this one from nathan yao i love it great job nathan keep up the good work the next one four is from microsoft and that's not a popular company lately, or I think things are turning around. Let me just put it this way. Satya Nadella, you're doing an amazing job, brother. Keep up the good work. And I'm so happy that a company that really pioneered a ton of technology uh, is turning things around and becoming really relevant again. I dare say cool. I don't know. Uh, there are, some of their products definitely are awesome. So that's what happens when you put a developer in charge instead of a business person like Steve Ballmer. But they have a cool thing they're doing where they're actually putting data centers in the ocean and they're putting them in the ocean because guess what the ocean's cold now there may be some ecological impacts and all this so we need really need to make sure we know what the hell we're doing before we uh, unleash the ocean with our data centers but i just thought this was a really innovative thing and it's nice to see microsoft again doing innovative stuff three Polygraph did a study on all these screenplays, 2,000 of them, and they wanted to break it down by gender and age to see if, in fact, there is rampant racism and sexism in movies. I, I don't know how to put this. Even if there is rampant racism and sexism in, in movies, it's not necessarily the people making the movies, it's the people watching them. The movie industry is a business. They have to get people in there and it's really hard for somebody to break from the herd. It sucks, but it's almost society's fault that movies are made this way. That's me mansplaining it to you. This is a cool site, and what they have is uh, a breakdown here where you can see uh, the different screenplay, dialogue, broken down by gender, uh, comedy. Are any of these even? Yeah, what you find basically is yes, it is very sexist. Uh, but that's what sells. I'm not blaming them. I think it sucks and I think we should change it, but it also isn't really entirely their fault. So this is a pretty fun site where you can play around with this data. I definitely recommend checking it out. You can uh, check out the description for the link or go to my blog and I'll have this post with that there. Two, the great AI awakening. This is uh, an extremely long, it's almost like a book. I mean, this should be a project manual. Every company that makes tech things should look at this article and read it and it should be required for all of their dev teams. It's incredible. Um, and what it is about is about Google Translate. I'm passionate about Google Translate because I think it is the best app out there for helping us communicate with one another. Communication and language are the first ways that you can truly understand someone else. And when you can understand someone else, you can have compassion for them. You can come to agreements, you can have peace and you can prosper together. When we don't have a commonality when there's no understanding and when language is a severe barrier between us, it's really hard to have those things and that's where I think a lot of hostilities come from and it sucks. Kudos to Google, great job. I think what you did here in this story about how you were able to basically reinvent Google Translate is a tale that all other companies should really learn from to, again, bring us together more closely. One, a tiny glass disc that can store 360 terabytes of data for 13.8 billion years. <laughs> Bravo, I don't even know what to say. This shit is way above my head, 
But here's the bottom line, and here's why this matters and why it's my pick for the most important data technology advancement in 2016. Data centers, as I mentioned, take a lot of energy, and there's a lot of stuff that goes into them, a lot of CO2 that's emitted, a lot of impact on our environment. They require a ton of energy. If you can break all of that down and break that mold and completely shift the paradigm to where data storage and data reliability are literally little tiny glass disks and in the size of maybe my office here, we could have you know, all of Facebook or all of the world's data and it could be powered by a very low voltage type thing. That will change the world. That will have a tremendous impact on on our lives, on climate change, on what we can and will collect, what we'll learn from the data. This is tremendous. And if this makes it to be able to scale, uh, it is gonna change everything as you know it. This little device here, is it gonna have terabytes and terabytes of storage? Should I get the uh, 64 gig or the 128 gig or the 360 terabyte phone? None of that will matter. It's incredible. And so kudos to the team in the UK that came up with this. I am just dying uh, or living to see what happens here. Last but not least, I can't leave you off here without talking about the election in the United States. There were three major elections, I would say, actually, that affected us uh, in the world. But this is a data show, not a pol politics show. So uh, I bring this one up because basically everybody got it wrong. Uh, everybody, I mean, 538 uh, probably did the best job. They gave Trump a one in three chance of winning. That sounds like, oh yeah, one in three, you could win. Look at everyone else. It was like a 1% chance. That's one in 100. One in 100 and one in three are very different predictions. And so 538 did a good job, but everybody else blew it. The only buddy, you have to give a tip of the hat to the LA Times poll. They were the only ones that really showed Trump winning. But this here is a map that the New York Times built showing how it shifted, how counties went from left to right. And the biggest deal was the Midwest. And if I scroll down, you can kind of see that right here. Now, this viz is tremendous. This is a great map. Go check this out. You can see that Hillary Clinton, where she won, basically in big popular cities, which doesn't help her because you don't win an election by getting more votes. You win an election by getting more electoral votes. Long story short, this is a great viz. The New York Times does a great job. I, I couldn't leave you without mentioning this. And lastly, I just want to say thank you for making 2016 a great year for me and my family. I was able to leave my full-time job as a chief data officer, uh, which probably is the pinnacle of my corporate life, and just do this full-time. So thank you, thank you, Thank you for allowing me to do what I love doing, which is being a geek, looking at data, and sharing with you what I find. So if you're new to the, to the show here, please subscribe. If you're part of the family already, uh, please like and share this video as much as you can. Have a happy new year. I hope you and your family and the holidays and everything are treating you guys well. I will see you back here soon, starting next week in 2017.